Hey tankers and welcome back to World of Tanks with PR154 where we're on Lakeville and we're watching what is 2 plus 2 of the Ducky Clan in the premium tier 8 Soviet heavy tank the IS-6B. Uh, this is a vehicle that has been uh, somewhat outshone by uh, newer entrants to the tech tree to the premium lineup uh, such as Object 252 U Defender. Um, but that's not to say IS-6B doesn't have its uh, its own particular advantages. Uh, for one, the the frontal armor layout it it lacks the prow nose of Defender, but that kind of makes the upper frontal plate uh, and lower frontal plate combination arguably a little bit more durable. So long as it doesn't sort of normalize these these plates here by by doing anything silly and turning an angle towards the enemy. It also uh, boasts a much higher rate of fire than the Object 252U or, or Defenders, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean to say they have the same penetration ability. Now, while the standard AP shells still maintain a rather respectable 196 millimeters of penetration, you don't quite get that premium penetration that you do with Object 252U Defender, where uh, in the case of, uh, of the IS-6B, you get up to 225 millimeters of penetration. Also notice, noting this, uh, the, the 122 millimeter gun on this vehicle, uh, you, you're still only doing 390 hit points per shot on, on average, uh, where, whereas you're doing sort of close to 440 per shot with the Defender. So we've got a swing and a miss against the enemy IS-6B. Of course, uh, balance is uh, prevalent in the matchmaker today. We've, they've got, uh, got a bit of a like-for-like -like matchmaking going there. Always, always pleasant to see. Thus far, it's been an interesting combination of vehicles going to different, uh, different parts of the map. We've got... Uh, We've got a, an IS-3 of all vehicles headed towards this uh, towards this hill area, um, while other tanks that that arguably have much better hull down play characteristics are uh, are really have really not deployed in the sort of hull down areas that you would expect them to do quite well. But it's, a, it's only early days yet. We're roughly even on, on hit points. We're only one gun short of the enemy's position. So first blood to what is 2 plus 2 here. That is able to put a penetrating hit into the VK-100-01P. The uh, T-32 answering with a bit of Pramo in what is 2 plus 2's general direction. Scorpion G cresting the ridge. Uh, unfortunately, what is 2 plus 2 not able to get the shot loaded and into the Scorpion G in time. But we're getting a better sign of, of the friendly team's position here. There's this sort of four trending towards five heavy tanks and uh, looking at the minimap there, we have up to eight enemy tanks that they're countering. We just lost the Centurion one as well, so this is this is potentially a four v eight situation now. Uh, enemy vehicles moving in to capitalise, but uh, what is two plus two and Joe Tora ninety eight in the Skoda T fifty six able to find a bit of an angle on both those vehicles and Joe Tora being able to knock out seventy five oh one k and IS three. What is 2 plus 2 coming around the corner and shutting down the T32 as well. So it's a very rapid equaliser there. That's three vehicles on the friendly side versus uh, five to six on the enemy side. Just looking for this shot on the P44 Pantera. Where are we going to find it? Uh, can we get the Coppola shot on the VK100-01P? Unfortunately, not this time. That's in spite of firing the, the premium APCR available to IS-6. But uh, there's a couple of gaps in the uh, in the hull of the VK7501K, and what is two plus two is able to find a very narrow one between the gun barrel and the hull, able to give the Pantera a bit of a repair bill there. That leaves the Pantera in a very very one-shottable position. 
uh, the VK 101P also looking a little bit sick but um, and also the T44 100 which what is 2 plus 2 is able to send back to the garage in fairly short order along the zero line there appears to have been a bit of a penetration we've got uh, the T28 prototype IS6B as well as the Scorpion G have been able to run through as well uh, 7832 122 has also been able to pull in behind what is 2 plus 2 as well now when you're cornered it is never fun um, and typically your best way out of the situation is to just pick a line and push through it now the 703-122 has tried and failed to put a salvo into the IS-6B so we know that it's it's going to be reloading for a little while having dived into deep into its effective magazine so pulling back towards it has been a relatively safe uh, a relatively safe approach although the IS-6B with its uh, its renowned DPM is still very much in the fight what is 2 plus 2 taking a position behind this building just to just to get a bit of an angle on the 7032-122 surely it would have been reloaded by now and that's possibly reflected in the fact that it's it's moved up if it fires again it's going to trash its DPM again having reached into the depths of its magazine it's going to start all over again and what is 2 plus 2 able to uh, shut down the IS-6B as it uh, pokes out from behind the building unfortunately uh, the, the damage per minute they might have been expecting from the 7032-122 was not forthcoming and a bit of a silly reverse from the double barreled Soviet premium tank ends up uh, costing it a trip back to the garage Looking down the four line, the Scorpion G appears to be toweled up by the Rheimtoll Borsig Waffenträger and the uh, Tier 8 British Light Tank, the LH MTV. That's a decent hit copped by uh, the IS-3 on the uh, on the two line as well. It uh, between it and the Rheimtoll Borsig Waffenträger on uh, on the friendly team uh, are all that is holding the uh, the two line together at this point in time. The backs are against the wall here. They are 2,000 hit points down. However, they are only one tank down. So uh, the battle's by no means over yet. Um, use of focus fire, triage of, of threats will, will be the necessary tools to win the day here. Some uh, combined crossfire between uh, two Scorpion Gs and what is 2 plus 2 is able to put the Rheimatol Borsig Waffenträger on a, on a one-shottable position. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, the, the friendly uh, Scorpion G is, has been knocked out. This just leaves the LHMTV in, uh, on the fall line, uh, potentially in a position where it can, it can start to harass these tank destroyers. Um, what is 2 plus 2 recognizing that pushing across the field to sort of counter the LHMTV uh, puts them in a potentially dangerous situation subject to crossfire from from all sorts of nasties uh, they they don't have there's a number of these vehicles they don't have accounted for at this point in time so we're pushing back to the city where we may find opportunities to use the armor of IS-6B and uh, strangely enough IS-6B has been spotted uh, pushing the way through so we're not quite sure where those eyes are coming from I and mean, you, you look at where this uh, where this white circle is there there wasn't actually too much within that circle so it's it's quite possible something with some excellent vision along the fall line but uh, and in what must have been a, a purely self-spotted effort, uh, what is 2 plus 2 has been able to identify the LHMTV. I do need to check what, what sort of crew um, what is 2 plus 2 has in the IS-6V, but um, uh, there's must be something rather fundamental at play here, whether the, uh, whether the, the LHMTV is just doesn't have the best crew or, or whether what is 2 plus 2 just has a fantastic crew that uh, for a heavy tank has been somewhat optimized for view range now making this cross through this corridor you can reasonably assume therefore that there is an enemy vehicle of some description 
hiding through here. What is 2 plus 2 uh, signaling that to the chat for what it's worth? Um, looking at the fire support options, they are a little bit limited. Right, old Borsig Waffentrager probably a little bit more concerned with this two line. Um, and Scorpion G with its sort of back and forth it appears to be displaying a little bit of indecision as to whether it moves in to support what is 2 plus 2 or whether it maintains a vigil on this four line. Not, uh, not quite sure what to do there. We know there's um, uh, potentially potentially there's a few enemy vehicles that could be pushing through the city. Um, so uh, what is two plus two trying to trying to play where he feels the vehicle can do the most good? And uh, of all things, the LHMTV has attempted to push through the city. We're hoping that this is the only enemy vehicle here, but no, the KV4 appears as well. Uh, certainly not before what is 2 plus 2 is able to put two rather uh, punchy shots into the LHMTV, putting it in a fairly one-shottable condition as well. Now, where we thought we had a major hit point advantage, it is actually not too bad. We can see we're roughly even on hit points. Um, granted, the, the better part of, of 800 hit points being taken off the LHMTV certainly helped matters, but um, while we can uh, while we can see that there's enemy tanks on the minimap, um, we don't actually get our own little update as to the hit point position until we move into radio range. Unfortunately, the KV-4 was in a one-shotable position, which, as we can see, what is 2 plus 2 has been able to capitalise on. You can see the FV-4202 has also emerged, and what appeared to be a full hit point position uh, not that long ago, having been outside of radio range, is now uh, now quite clearly one-shottable for what is 2 plus 2 as well. Aiming, shooting, and shutting down FV-4202. Uh, P-44 Pantera making itself known, and that was, that was a vehicle that uh, what is 2 plus 2 had given a tremendous repair bill earlier in the battle, and is now able to knock it out for his seventh kill of the game. This just leaves LHMTV and the Emil-1. Now the Emil one we had anticipated was playing the uh, playing a hull down game here on the two line. It appears to have still been the case, and the Runtel Borsig Waffentrager had uh, had kept that at bay. So there, we've got what is two plus two moving in to try to try to uh, knock out the LHMTV. We've got flanking fire coming from the Scorpion G, which. Uh, just improving those firing angles, just really restricting the space within which the, the tier 8 British medium tank LHM TV can operate. Making excellent use of cover behind these uh, behind these rocks, but uh, Combat Wombat and the Scorpion G is able to find and knock out the LHM TV. This just leaves the Emil 1, uh, which in itself is not in a fantastic hit point position, only 15 hit points to the Emil-1. But um, so long as it's in the fight, that is enough. The IS-6B is is perfectly one-shottable for the Emil-1. We've bounced one shot. We know it's a three-round magazine on the Emil-1. It uses its second shot to knock out the Scorpion G. So there's one shot left in the locker on Emil-1. And we know that one shot is enough to send what is 2 plus 2 back to the garage. So what will what will happen to that one shot? What is 2 plus 2 firing the high explosive into the Emil 1 trying to trying to capitalize just trying to angle the armor to absorb that last shot and we're able to do. Now the Emil 1's harmless, it's on the reload and what is 2 plus 2 presses the advantage and shuts it down for his eighth kill of the game. So that is um, a fantastic and, and well-deserved victory there by what is 2 plus 2 of the Ducky Clan in the premium tier 8 Soviet heavy tank IS-6B. Let's take a look at the results. So that's a nice mastery badge there for what is 2 plus 2 of the Ducky Clan in the IS-6B. And we've just picked up an absolute fistful of medals here of, of both the uh, both the Badge of Merit variety and the Epic and Battle Heroes variety. We've got the Steel Wall Medal for receiving the most hits and that's at least 11 of any other player of the team and the potential damage there needs to uh, amount to at least a, a thousand hit points. We've certainly smashed that with 5,930 hit points of damage 
blocked by armor. We've got the top gun medal for destroying at least six enemy vehicles, and it turns out we have destroyed eight enemy vehicles in this battle, which has also earned Water Supers 2 the most coveted Radley Walters medal for destroying eight to nine enemy vehicles. We've also picked up the cool headed medal for surviving at least 10 ricochets or non penetrations from enemy vehicles in a row, and that's uh, that's indicative of some fantastic use of armor in deflecting and coming fire. We've also picked up the high caliber medal for accounting for at least 20% of the hit point pool of the enemy team. Uh, so, very nicely done there with over 5,000 damage inflicted. Uh, having a look at the badges of merit, we've picked up the bruiser medal for causing damage to our enemy modules or crew members uh, at least five times in the course of the battle. We've picked up the Hand of God medal for surviving and winning the battle, having received damage from at least four different enemy vehicles in the course of the fight. We've received the Duelist medal for destroying at least two enemy vehicles that have caused damage to them. Shellproof again for having total damage blocked by armor exceeding hit points of the vehicle, which in fact we have actually exceeded the hit points of the vehicle more than three times. We had 1,710 damage um, blocked by that vehicle and if our maths are correct we've got 1710 times three times blocked is 5130 hit points and we've come away with nearly 6000 blocked 5930 hit points now that's actually been able to trigger the primary one of the primary conditions for HT12 of object 260 uh, the other one being to cause at least 3,000 hit points of damage to enemy vehicles, which we have as well. So there's a uh, there, there's a both of the primary mission conditions satisfied for HT12 of the Object 260. Uh, the other two being to win and to survive, which we've also been able to knock over as well with the IS-6B. So an absolutely fantastic result there. Very difficult mission to to knock over for for many. It's it's, it's one of the uh, one of the, the most often skipped missions along the personal campaign trail, the old HT-12, but uh, what is 2 plus 2 has been able to knock it over on this particular occasion. Having a look at the team scores, we've got a, quite a significant placement uh, ahead of his teammates, a bit of a carry there, but uh, I'm sure they are most grateful for their efforts. We can see what is 2 plus 2 is backed up by the Rheumatol Scorpion G, and Joe Atora 98 of the Lemon Clan in the Skoda T56, uh, and that was that was particularly handy uh, during that that earlier fight, as as enemy vehicles were locally outnumbering them and pushing out of the city, uh, and it was uh, just a fantastic to to see what is two plus two and teammates be able to fight that surge off. Special mention on the enemy team to Joey Jr. in the Emil 1, having uh, been able to account for nearly 4,600 hit points of what is 2 plus 2's team, as well as 5 kills, but unfortunately it failed to carry on this particular occasion. Having a look at the credit position, this has been uh, quite a profitable game for what is 2 plus 2, and that's in spite of expending the full load of premium shells uh, in the course of the battle. A bit of an act of desperation there, but uh, quite justified under the circumstances. But we've come away with uh, nearly 62,000 credits for their efforts in this, in this tier 8 premium vehicle. So very well played there. Thank you very much for sharing this replay with us. What is 2 plus 2? And if you've got a replay that you'd like to share with the community through World of Tanks with PR154, please reach out over Discord or any of the links below, and we'll do our best to sort you out. In the meantime, take care out there.